This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the president of Patriot Battery Metals, Mr. Blair Way. Blair, great to have you back on. How are you today? I'm good. It's kind of nice to be talking to you live from the James James Bay region, which for a change up here in the in the uh, cold and snow, but uh, also with the drills turning. So it's uh, it's a great opportunity to get to site and see what's going on. Your timing is perfect. You had a news release this morning that was very well received by the market. I'm a simple guy, so I'm going to give you my simple take on it. We know that the first five drill holes from the initial program that we have assays back from. Um, you know, when, when you saw the pegmatite, it correlated well with the spodumene, right? And it correlated well with consistent grades throughout. And I think that's what really got us that were early to the story excited about the potential because you have, you know, what was initially a two kilometer, two kilometers of trend and then p potentially 20 kilometers of trend. You've now consolidated the entire land package and added to it. And you now have over 50 kilometers in trend. The news release you put out this morning spoke to the first six drill holes that have been completed for a total of approximately 1,329 meters. And again, and I think this is the important part, I want to stress it's early, but all six of these drill holes have encountered what you describe as significant intervals of pegmatite with intercepts that are near continuous and ranging from approximately 12 meters to 121 meters core length. Core is being processed, and uh, obviously we're all excited about assays, but how does it look when you're there in person looking at it? Yeah, so obviously being up here at site, I can spend time talking with the geologists and talking through what we're doing, but you know, big picture here is we've got this massive uh, kilometers, 50 kilometers of ground that we're working on drilling in about a 1.8 kilometer zone between CB1 and CB5. That drill program over the winter period here now, while well, we can be on the ice and drill easily um, instead of being on the water in a barge or something. So that drill, this drill program that we're doing right now is showing us what's is basically connecting the CV1, which is to the east, and then the CV5, which is to the west across the other side of the lake. So we're working our way from the west to the east, and certainly what we're seeing, and that's really what the purpose of our uh, of the news release was to let people know how the drill program's going. The weather has been cooperating mostly, and we're making progress both drilling the holes, but we're also seeing meaningful pegmatite in pretty much every hole we're drilling. But it's also showing us the connectivity. So as we advance towards CB1, we we hope and. You know, that's our intention is that we will continue to see these sort of pegmatite intercepts. But taking that beyond just this winter drill program into the spring and summer drill program and the uh, field work we have to do, we're we're going to continue to work in this area between CB1 and CB5 with the drill rigs. But we're also putting a crew on the ground to to look at our 50 kilometer stretch of ground, chasing down oat crops. Um, and actually doing some sampling, whether it's channel sampling, and then eventually, if, if things are looking right, then we'll also uh, we'll move a rig over um, and, and do some drilling on some of these targets. So we've got a ton of targeting to do this summer. We've got a ton of drilling to do on the, the areas that we're working in now. So it, it really is a fantastic time for the company to be to, to be not only proving up an area that we are working in and have a high level of confidence, but we also have, also have a great deal of ground to continue to explore and then find more drill targets. These first six holes that you referenced in the news release, Blair, can you provide us some context as to how spaced the current drilling is and how much of that trend is covered with you know, the initial six holes and, and, and obviously with two rigs turning the follow up to that, how wide a net are you trying to cast with the initial program? So, so the spacing is always a challenge because if you go too wide and then you may not know where or what you missed. So, but at this stage, we're working in sort of hundred, hundred meter uh, on a hundred meter increments. So as we work from the West at CV five to the East where CV one is, we're making it making 100 meter steps. We're also doing some 100 meter um, step boats from there. So what that means to answer your question, how much of the trend have we drilled in from from CV5 towards uh, CV1? We've probably worked a couple 300 meters now, and and from the other end with the drill rig too, 
we are, again, another 100 or 200 meters in that direction. The Jura Rig 2 showed up a little bit later. So all up, we've probably identified somewhere in the order of four, you know, four, maybe even 500 meters both ways where we're seeing this connectivity or some form of connection. And as we feed that data into the model, and it's not perfectly linear and everything, you know, has some variability there. But yeah, as we continue to, in, so we say, fill in the gap between the drilling at rig one and rig two, as we advance to each other, each rig towards each other, then we'll have that connection and better understand the relationship of what's going on down below in the, in the ground. So correct me if I'm wrong, Blair, because I'm directionally challenged sometimes, but it sounds like with one rig, you're, you're, you're drilling and stepping out on 100 meter increments to the north. And with the other rig, it's 100 meter step outs to the east. Is that is that correct? No, no. no. So we're starting on the west side. Told CV5 <laughs> is at the west end of the trend. Right. And, and CV1 is on the east. So we're basically working from the west towards the east and then this rig two is from the east working towards the west so we're, if you drew a line from east to west approximately we're we're following that line in 100 meter increments until we connect that sort of 1.8 meter trend got 1.8 kilometer trend right right yeah. right right no understood and so obviously that's going to be critical because if the assays come back from these first six holes um and they're anything like you know, or even exceed the first four or five holes that we got, all of a sudden you start getting a much clearer picture as to the potential for tonnage, um, grade, and then obviously you can start amplifying that by, you know, 100 meter step outs, 150 meter step outs, and really, really filling in the blanks. But it's not hard for me to imagine. And again, I'm biased. I'm a shareholder. I was early to it. Um, before we had, you know, the, the clarity as to the direction even on what was going to be the flagship, uh, Corvette has clearly emerged as the flagship, but from my biased opinion, it doesn't seem, um, like a far stretch to say that if you're able to put out a resource estimate here in 2022, you could be showing the market, the potential for triple digit tonnage and by triple digits, I'm, I'm meaning, you know, hundred million tons plus. Is that is that out of the realm of possibility? I mean, I, I have to be careful when I say answer a question like that, but certainly the 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 scale of what we're looking at, even between CV one and CV five, there there is the potential for something of that scale without a doubt. The drill still has to deliver that, and certainly what we're seeing is is sending us in that direction, and and that's you know that's one of the reasons of getting up here at site for the for the winter program, and I'll be here at site for parts of the summer program as well so that I can see it firsthand and certainly what I'm seeing and I mean I I am literally seeing it today and tomorrow and I've been in the core shack for quite a bit of time today I'm seeing you know spodumene crystals that are, are are very significant and I'm seeing it repeatedly within the pegmatite so it's not just a you know the odd crystal here and there it's very consistent which indicates to me it's similar to what we saw in the previous holes that we drilled at CV5, where we got those great, you know, those massive intercepts. Um, so the the lithology visually looks the same. So we're until we get the assays, we don't know for sure, but certainly the visual indicators, the visual clues, if we want to call them that, are telling us that we're seeing the same type of uh, um, pegmatite and the same type of spodumene crystals. And there's the green crystals. There's the light. You know the the green is a, is more of an altered um, spodumene, whereas the lighter colored, more sort of sparkly, which I've just learned a little bit more about pegmatite and the spodumenes today, is showing us just just how much we have in in some of these holes. So um, yeah, certainly the scale the scale is looking very good. And as you said, this is now rapidly becoming our flabs flagship project because of what we we are seeing the drill bit deliver. Um, we'll get this next round of assays, and by the time we hit spring breakup, as as the lake thaws and we have to pull the rig back to shore, um, you know, I think we're going to have something something pretty pretty decent to talk about, and then we continue to use the summer drill program to to better understand and and even delineate it with step outs further further afield, so that we can even get a greater understanding of the depth and scale that we have. 
Can you speak to some of your more advanced peers and and the kind of tonnage that they have and the market caps that that tonnage is commanding? Uh, because I want to make sure that I provide context for those that maybe didn't understand the story early on when when we were trying to explain it or didn't understand the significance of those four, for first few drill holes, right? We're now starting to see more continuity. We're hoping that the grade holds up. Um, the scale certainly is there if that is the case, but can you speak to some of your peer analogs, their kind of market caps and where they're at as far as it relates to the tonnage in their resource? Well, one of the best analogs for us is critical element and, you know, they've got their rose deposit and off the top of my head, that's somewhere around 25, 26 million tons. Um, you know, they have a market cap of $300 million. Um, you know, those are pretty substantial, substantial numbers. And that gives you a feel that's for 25 million tons. So if, if we are, as we were saying previously, we get a, a triple digits, you know, that gets pretty substantial. Um, Frontier Lithium, another company that is Ontario. We've got a couple of deposits that are in the 10, one's in the order of 10, 11, and the other is probably in around 50. So again, say 25 to 30 million tons, um, reasonable percentage for that one, I think one point, somewhere around 1.5%, give or take. And, and they've got a market cap of you know 570 odd million, maybe 600 million now, because some of these guys have been going up since I last looked at them. So there definitely is some very similar um, deposit sort of style, shall we say, and even scales if we are conservative on how we scale ours. Um, and it still shows our market cap of having quite, quite a distance to go. Um, and if we can prove into the triple digits, as, as you were alluding to, then suddenly that scale, we start becoming pretty significant in, in amongst our peers. We may well be the biggest, but we're not there yet, certainly, but the, uh, the opportunity and and for the drill to deliver that uh, through this drill program is, you know, we think is quite high. Critical elements and, and the Rose Deposit is, is interesting to me. It's a company I've followed for quite some time. Nick Hodge, my my, my partner, did phenomenally well um, helping finance that early as yep. well. But it's interesting to me because they also have, well, one, they're in the same region. Two, they have yep. tantalum as well, right? Which is, which is something that's emerging as a yes. big benefit to that rose deposit and to critical elements in the sense that, you know, and they do a very good job of highlighting this. This is conflict-free tantalum, which is becoming and emerging more and more as, as an important theme as to sourcing of these critical metals. And I got to believe with the elevated tantalum grades that we saw recently, you got to be excited about that aspect as well, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's, a, it's an economic offset. And it's got a market, and you know these these are some very things you're looking for. Obviously, lithium is clearly has a growing market. Um, you know the great thing about where we're located, um, which is dissimilar to some of these other companies we're talking about, is when I'm driving along the road, and, and there is a road that that is is adjacent to our property. It's about 15 k's as the crow flies, and we drove from Radisson to our camp uh, yesterday. I'm driving along a high voltage power line for for the extension for, for the full extent of that road. Um, so we've got you know clean green hydropower right here at site. We've got a full year round road right here at site. And, you know it's a 15 kilometer connector, which is is you know pretty insignificant really. I mean these are these are things that suddenly make a project like this once we start defining a proper resource and getting those numbers behind us. Then having clean green power, having the tantalum offsets. Having the road and the infrastructure in order to be able to move a, a you know spodumene concentrate pretty easily to whatever port or whatever processing facility is ready to handle it. I mean, it's it's a, it becomes quite a, a viable um, project that has a great deal of appeal because of the because of the associated benefits that I just described. It sounds like a region that is ripe for consolidation. If you're a major and are looking for some cost offsets where you could, you know, come in and write a check or several checks for several of the players in the region that have established resources and companies, of course, like Patriot Battery Metals that's working towards that. When can we expect to start seeing assays, Blair? Um, the lab that we're using, we did change labs because we did have some challenges last drill program with labs. So well, this new lab is committed to us. It's 
SGS, I think we talk about it in a press release. They've committed about these, you know, the turnaround times of, you know, four to five weeks. So our expectation is that that's, that's what they're going to deliver. Um, so yeah, we've del started delivering um, samples to the lab. So by the time they actually receive them, then they have four or five, four to five weeks to turn them around. So uh, as far as timing for that, I guess that takes us to, um, you know, sometime in May. So we should start seeing assays in May. Excellent. Blair, exciting times. Anything else to add? No, I mean, we've, we've talked a lot. It's, it is really good to be on site and seeing the guys and, you know, the progress that we're making at site, getting them set up, obviously now for the winter program, which also serves us, you know, so there's an economy of scale of, of doing a program both in the winter and then demo, you know, we don't have to demob anything. And then once the spring breakout comes, we roll right back into it. So our start up in the spring is even faster than, than, you know, if we start from scratch again. So, yeah, what we what we have here is a is a very clear program laid out in front of us. By the time we get to the fall, we're going to have something I think pretty pretty spectacular to talk about, and I'm looking forward to to advancing through it through this winter program into the summer, and then uh, yeah, we will we'll be talking much more uh, clearly about what we know about this this particular area between CV1 and uh, CV5, but also we're going to know so much more about the overall 50 kilometer trend of property and what other outcrops we found and how many more CV5s and CV1s or whatever we'll find on our property to then put the drill to that as well. So it's a it's an exciting time for the company. There's a there's a lot of excitement in the air with the geos. What they're seeing is is making them making you know making them very very interested in, and engaged into what we're doing here so it's it's a, it's really exciting to be in a project that's this that's that's this sort of captivating i've uh, spent enough time between anchorage alaska and chicago in the cold to not want to be there during winter but i am looking forward uh to being on site hopefully with you uh during warmer months and and you know hopefully by then <laughs> we're starting to get a better sense of the potential scale of what's there, not what could be there as, as we're talking about it now. Blair, always a pleasure to no, have you absolutely. on. Thank you for that thorough update. That's great. Always, always great to catch up, Toronto. All right. We'll chat soon. Bye now.